Hey everybody! Welcome to our Introduction to T-SQL class, Module 3. Today we're going to be covering the SELECT statement. And the SELECT statement is the basic command that we'll learn in T-SQL to extract data from a table. We'll also learn how to specify the columns that we want to, to return, how to alias columns, and how to sort our results. Then we'll talk about some tips and tricks when, you, when using SQL Server Management Studio. So here in this graphic, you can see the basic syntax of a select statement. There's four parts. There's two keywords, the select and the from. You can see that these are all capitalized. In T-SQL, these keywords do not need to be capitalized. However, it is a best practice just so you can easily differentiate between a T-SQL keyword and a column name or a table name. So we have four parts in this. We have select, which is our keyword that begins our select command. Then we have a star. And what the star is, it's a wildcard character, and it represents all the columns in a particular table. So after the star, we have a from. And after the from keyword, we designate the tables that we're going to return results from in our query. So in the from, you'll enter your table name, and if you have a combination of ta table names, you will do the joining after the from statement. And we'll get to joining a little bit later in our modules. Okay, here's an example of a situation where we don't use the star. In this query, you can see that we name three different columns, and you can notice that they're all separated by a comma. So we use commas to separate our column names in our select statement. And you can see that the syntax for the rest of the query is exactly the same. So select column one, comma, column two, comma, column three, space from our table names. And we'll get to aliasing after our demos. Okay, so here we have a blank query window. If you don't see this query window, just click select new query, the new query button and it'll open up a new query window for you. Also, I want you to note that we're using the AdventureWorks 2012 database here. So if you click on the drop-down arrow, you'll be able to see all of the databases that are installed on your SQL Server. Hopefully you have the AdventureWorks 2012 database installed. If you don't have it selected here, click on the drop-down and select the AdventureWorks 2012 database. All right, so now we're gonna create our first select statement. So I want you to type, select star from person, which is our schema, and person, which is the person table in our person schema. You may have noticed that IntelliSense tries to help you out. If IntelliSense selects the right, correct column name or table name in your query, all you have to do is hit the tab key on your keyboard and it'll autofill that word in for you, whether it's a column name or a table name. Okay, so we've written our first query and you can see we have the four different parts of a select query. We have the select, keyword, the star, or our column names, uh, the from keyword, and the tables that we're gonna be selecting from. Okay, now let's hit execute and let's look at our results. Okay, so you can see we have a fairly small table here. We only have 20,000 records. One thing to note that when using select star from a query, it's actually not a best practice in a production environment. The reason for this is using a select star, you're going to introduce a ton of data into your query, and this has significant overhead for your SQL Server instance. So what a better practice would be is to select only the column names that you need in your query and also use a filter on your query to only return the rows that you mean to select. And we'll talk about filters in a little bit. But now let's talk about how we can use specific column names to only return the columns that we're interested in. So let's click over to where we have the star and I'll click backspace to remove the star. Now I'm gonna enter the column names that we wanna select. And right now I'm only interested in the first name and the last name from our person.person .person table. I'm going to start typing first name, and you can see that the autocomplete window tries to help me out with the query. 
you can see that first name is selected and if I click click tab on my keyboard while it's selected it'll auto fill out that first name column with me so we're gonna do first name we're gonna do a comma because we're gonna use two columns and they have to be separated by a comma and we're gonna start typing last name too and I'll also do a comma there okay so we have our new query now I'm gonna click on execute and you'll see in the results we only have two columns in our results now. Instead of returning every row on the table, I want to show you one additional keyword that you can use to only return the top number of rows that you're looking for. And the way that we're going to do this is with the top command. So I'm going to say select top, and I'll put 10 in parentheses, and we'll click execute. And this will return the top 10 rows of our query. One important thing to note is that T-SQL does not have any implicit ordering unless you define the ordering. So this table is going to return the first 10 rows that comes back to our client from the, from the database. And those 10 rows may not be in order. And we'll talk about how to specifically order our rows in a little bit, but we'll do that with the order by command. Okay, so now let's talk about aliasing. Aliasing is a way that you can assign a different name to a, a particular column. So oftentimes for a reporting query, you might not want your column names camel cased. If you notice in that last query, we have first name and last name, but the words first and name are concatenated into one word with no space. It's common that you might want to add a space in there, but it's a bad practice to store spaces in your actual database. So instead of storing spaces in your database, we can keep it concatenated in our database and use aliases to assign a different name for our reporting query. So let's look at how to do that in our demo. Okay, so here's our query, and we have first name, and after our first name column name, I'm gonna type as. And as is the keyword we use to designate our alias. One thing to note is as is optional and you can replace that with just a space and your alias name. And for first name, we're gonna type in first. And for last name, we'll type in last. And you can see that we have one example where we're using the as keyword and one example without it. Now this is going to function the exact same way when we run our query and we'll look at the results in one second. So I'll click on execute and if we go over to the results set, you can see that the two column names are first and last. So these column names have been renamed in the context of our query scope. Now we'll talk about sorting. If you recall, earlier I mentioned that in a database table, the data is not necessarily stored in the order that you want in your query. So what you have to do, you have to define the order that you want your query to return in if you want it to be in a particular order. One thing to note is that this does require some additional overhead to your SQL Server. So just keep in mind that you only want to use the order by when you do absolutely need it in a particular order. If your query does not need to be ordered, don't do it, okay? So let's look at how we can use the order by in a SQL query, okay? So let's look at our last result set right now. You'll notice that our last names look to be in alphabetical order. However, if we go to our first names, our first names do not seem to be alphabetized. So what I want to do, I want to order our result set by last name, and then by first name. To do that, we'll use the order by clause. So after our from in our T-SQL query, I'll press enter and we'll type in order by. And yes, there is a space between the words order and by, and the color of the text will be blue to indicate that this is a keyword, even though it's a two part keyword. So we're gonna order this query by last name and then first name. So our order by keyword takes column arguments and it can be a series of columns. So we're gonna use two columns in this case. We're gonna do our last name 
And if you notice here, our last alias name came up. So we can use our aliases in our order by query. I'm not going to use it here because it makes it a little easier to read to call it last name. So we'll also order it by first name and then we'll run our query. Okay, so now we can look at our result sets. In our result set here, we can see that our last name column starts with A and it looks to be sorted, but our first name column doesn't really appear to be sorted. The reason for that is, is that we're primarily sorting on the last name. And the first name sorting wouldn't kick in unless we had two different people with the same last name. So let's alter our order by clause and see what the results would be if we used our first name first. Okay, so now if we wanted to order our query by first name, then last name, let's see what the results will look like. Click on execute, and you can see that we get all of the A's on the top for our first name. And our last names, we, have, we do have some examples of multiple errands, and you can see Baker, Bryant, Butler, those are sorted alphabetically. Okay, let's talk about some tips and tricks for SQL Server Management Studio. One, one common thing that we're going to need to do is just to take a quick peek inside of a table. And a common way to do that would be to right-click on the table in your Object Explorer and select 1000 rows will be an option in your context menu, as illustrated in, in this picture here. What this does is it creates a simple query that selects the top 1000 rows of that table for you. And if you recall earlier, we don't like to select star from a table because we don't want to return every row of a potentially very large table because that can cause performance problems for our SQL Server. So th this query makes a safe query for you to run and take a look at the results that are in a particular table. Another trick is to script out a database object. So if you right click on a database object like a table, you can go to script table and select two. And you can also see the script table as in the context menu here. And what this will do, it'll write a simple select to or a create to query for you. And you can save that in a file or you can put it into a, a new query window for you. Also, you can drag table and column names. If we wanted to drag a column name, we can do it by clicking and dragging from our object explorer all the way to our query window. And it'll fill in, for example, if we wanted to do from this human resources.department table, all we would have to do would be to click and drag from here to our query window. Also, we're going to cover our query designer. And what the query designer is, it's a graphical user interface that will write some T-SQL for us. It's mostly beneficial for simple T-SQL queries. When you get into more complicated stuff, you're going to want to write it from scratch. And we do want to practice writing from scratch as much as possible, but now that you're just learning T-SQL, the query designer could be a useful to tool for you to write your queries a little more quickly. Okay, so let's take a look at our demos. All right, so let's look over at our Object Explorer. In our Object Explorer bar here, you can see that we have the AdventureWorks table, our AdventureWorks database, and all the tables that are in our particular database. Okay. And we used this person.person .person table before, but what if we really didn't know what that table looked like? And we were like, what, what are the contents of our person.person .person table? Is, is this table empty or do we have data in there? And what does the column structure look like in this table? The easy way to do that would be to right click on the table and select top 1000 rows. So we'll do that here. We'll right click on the person.person .person table we're going to do select top 1000 rows. Okay. And you can see that it automatically runs the query for, for us and we see a select top 1000 and it auto fills in every single column name from our database table. Okay. And it also runs that query and we can see the results, the results set at the bottom. So this is a very easy way to take a quick peek at the table. You'll also know, notice that the column names and table names are surrounded by brackets. The reason for this is you are allowed to have a space in a table or column name 
even though it's not allowed. And when you do have a space, you'll want to use brackets in your T-SQL queries. However, this is a terrible practice, so don't do it. If you're designing your new tables, do not put spaces in there. One other thing to note from this query is that normally we've been talking about a schema table structure. We don't have that here. We actually have a three-level path. We actually name the database, then name the schema, and then name the table. You can also hear that called a fully qualified statement. So this gives you the whole path of this database object that we're selecting from. The database, the schema, and the table. Okay, now let's take a look at how we can script out a table. So we haven't talked about the syntax for creating new tables yet, but if we want to see that, SQL Server will actually script out our existing tables for us automatically. And this is how we do that. So if we look at our Object Explorer, let's take a look at a different table now. Let's take a look at our Department table from Human Resources. We can right-click on the Human Resources that department table, go, go to script table as, and we can script, script out the table command and create to, or we can do select to, insert to, update to, or delete to. Now we haven't talked about our insert and, and updates and deletes yet, but we have talked about our select statement. So let's go to select to and to new query editor window. And this will open up a new window for us and put in the query. I got disconnected from my database here, so I'll click on connect. And you can see it doesn't run the query for us, but it, it returns a select statement with every column from our table. And we can run that by just clicking the execute command and we'll get our results set. You'll also notice that it uses the use keyword that we talked about previously. The use keyword in T-SQL will define what database we're, we're looking for. So when you first open up an editor window, you might get an error when running a query if it defaults to the master database. So I, I switch the, the database that we're looking at, and this table and schema are not in that database. So if I try to execute this query by itself, I'll actually get an error if I switch it back to the master database. And it says invalid object name. So what use does, it'll automatically switch this dropdown for us to our database name. So if I select it from here, that will change from master to AdventureWorks 2012 automatically. So I'll click on execute and it'll work perfectly. Okay, so let's open up a new query window. And now we'll talk about how to use the query editor window. You can get to the Query Editor window by right-clicking in your Query window and going to Design, Query, and Editor. You can also get to the query by going to Query in your menu bar, and Design, Query, and Editor will be in your menu bar as well. So go ahead and click that, and it'll bring up the Query Editor. So the first thing that your Query Designer wants you to identify is what you're going to be selecting from in your query. So we're going to define all of our tables our views or functions that we're selecting from. And we'll use the person.person .person table again, and we'll click on add, we'll click close. And you can see that here we have a graphical representation of our table. And we also have every column name with a checkbox beside it. So if we want to select from our column names, you can see this select statement here will get automatically filled in when we click a checkbox, so I will click first name, last name, and suffix, and all three columns will get automatically separated with a column. So here, this query got written automatically for us. You can also define a filter for a where clause or the sort order. The sort order will be a drop down list of what position you want a particular column to be in. So if we want to sort on first name, We'll select one here, and last name we'll select two. And then we'll sort by three. And you can see that the query got automatically populated for us. And if we click the OK button, query will automatically get inserted into our query window. And we can just execute it and see the results. Okay, 
So we won't be using the query editor window a whole lot in this class because we're going to actually want to get practice writing queries from scratch. But it's a good tool to know that you have this particular tool in your toolkit. Okay, so we also have some practice problems. You can consider this your homework. We got three practice problems here, so go ahead and try to do this on your own. And if you have any problems, please reach out to one of our consultants and we'll try to answer it for you.